Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we're starting to get some green here and it's because they came out with, I believe it's because they came out with some inflation numbers that said that inflation is going down. Let's see who uh, to this morning is leading the way, Ethereum, Quant. Just by chance, I happened to buy some Quant this morning at $1.21 and got some of that and that is a good thing so i was able to scoop some of that up now um wanted to show you this this is great this was sent to me by riz xrp jim rickards blocked me and he blocked me i'm going to show you why he blocked me in a second um thanks for the screenshot riz i'm still blocked jim rickards blocked me after showing his ice nine video i meant ice dash nine not equals nine um BlackRock video below, which I don't understand because I've, this is what I don't get. I'm a big fan of Jim Cramer, of not Jim Cramer, but Jim, shoot, not Jim Cramer. Jim Rickards, I'm a big fan. I agree with almost everything he says, and I think he's extremely smart. Um, and so, and, and I agree with this. Uh, he says, I'm in the gold room in Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods. This is where the Bretton Woods agreements were signed. That's the original table and chairs unchanged since 1944. We are closer to a new system where gold again plays a role that more than most, I think he meant more than most realize. I've been saying this over and over and over. That's why I keep telling you about my sponsor, Glint. I'm buying physical gold. I'm buying gold in my Glint account because it's got a master debit card, MasterCard debit card attached to it. So I have it, I'm able to spend my gold with my Glenn account if I'm able to. A link to this will be in the top of this description. Now let's get back to Jim Cramer. <laughs> I keep saying Jim Cramer. Jim Rickards, I'm sorry for insulting you with that, Jim Rickards. Um, but anyway, so this is, he is so dead on, but he is also dead on on the video that got him to block me. And I still don't understand it, but I want you to see the beginning of it again. Listen to this, talk about truth. I was having dinner with a friend not long ago in New York City. We met at a place called Oriol, which is in Midtown. My dinner companion that night was a senior advisor to BlackRock. As you may know, BlackRock is now the largest asset manager on the planet. It directly manages $5 trillion in assets, and it oversees another $11 trillion through its Aladdin platform. That means one firm controls more money than the GDPs of China, Russia, and Japan combined. Now, he just mentioned the Aladdin platform. What was the announcement the other day? They were partnering with Coinbase, specifically the Aladdin platform was mentioned. This guy doesn't, apparently he doesn't want this shown right now. Anyway, my dinner companion happens to work directly for BlackRock's CEO. As we nursed our white wine and the evening wore on, she let something slip. If I remember her words, she said something like, they want to tell us we can't sell. What was she talking about? Who was she talking about? I placed a few calls, first to my contacts in Washington, then to a few people on Wall Street. Soon I was on a plane for a series of meetings to London, to Geneva, back to New York, then down to South America. As I began connecting the dots, a pattern emerged. It revealed a network of more than 189 individuals positioned inside the world's major financial institutions. Some of them hold senior positions inside the IMF, World Bank, and every central bank in the G20, including our own Federal Reserve. These elites share one vision and they're about to make it a reality. That vision is one world order, one world taxation, and one world money. That pretty much says it all, doesn't it, folks? Now, um, James Rule made an interesting point this morning. The question is, when will this hypothetical lawsuit end? Or hypocritical, I'm sorry, hypocritical lawsuit end. XRP was number three right before the lawsuit dropped. XRP has not hit an all-time high for over four and a half years Bitcoin and Ethereum hit all-time high 11-10-2021. Folks, my prediction is very simple. You know, uh, I remember when Miguel Valles said that um, they, the, the goal, it was a simple goal of, having, of being a um, world reserve digital currency. Well, I have a simple prediction. My simple prediction, and I know you're not allowed to make predictions, but I will make this one. My simple prediction 
is that there will be a day when XRP, I just drew a blank. There will be a day when XRP rises to the throne. XRP will be number one. That day will come, and I don't know how it comes, I don't know when it comes, but that day will come. It will take the rightful place where it would have been years ago if there had not been a Bitcoin and Ethereum free pass. That was the whole reason that the bad guys got involved is to prevent that from happening because uh, they knew it would happen. Um, then there's this, breaking U.S. inflation. You're talking about a good prediction. I, I tweeted this this morning and now I'm going to show you two clips where my prediction comes true. The, the, the story was breaking. U.S. inflation has fallen to 8.5% dropping for the first time since April 2022. And I said, cue CNBC to carry the inflation is falling narrative. If this doesn't work, change the definition of inflation again. All right, so right after I tweeted this, out comes Jim Cramer. You can always count on him. Watch this. Thanks. Uh, let's get down to our pal at the New York Stock Exchange. Jim Cramer joins us now. Jim, what do you think of this number? Has the train left the station? Oh, look, good is good. Jay Powell so far is doing a great thing. A lot of the numbers have come down. Energy's come down. The price of the pumps come down. Travels come down. Used cars come down. I mean, what more do we need? I listen. See, so there's your narrative. And then Melissa Lee wants to help out. And let's get back to the broader markets here as we count down to that critical CPI data. Senior markets commentator Mike Santoli joins us now with what he is watching. A lot's going to change, Mike, in a half hour. You would think, Melissa, and as often happens ahead of one of these big data releases where it's considered to be a known potential catalyst, the market has pulled itself into a little bit of a neutral spot, uh, hesitate. Is inf inflation finally slowing? You see that? Okay. Now, speaking of CNBC, I just thought I would show you a, remember back um, all the way up until January 2018, CNBC knew what you and I know. They saw XRP, they saw what Ripple was doing, they saw how huge that XRP would be. Somewhere, they even, all the way leading up to January 2018, they even, uh, down here I'll show you, they were teaching people how to set, how to Old buy XRP. Market, folks, it's gonna drive you crazy like it drives BK, but you know what, still doesn't matter. Here we go, so up here you can see, I've got some BTC up there, I need Bitcoin to buy Ripple. All, all right. So they were showing you how to buy it. They were all in. At some point, I'm sure it's a pure coincidence, but remember, January 2018 is when Jay Clayton is in the offices of Andres and Horowitz, and, and, and it's right around the time that XRP hits its all-time high. In fact, I think the all-time high was on January 14th, 2018. On January 24th, I believe, 2018, Jay Clayton is sitting in the office with Andres and Horowitz, he sends out Chris Dixon to put this venture capital working group together. That's what leads to the Ethereum free pass <clears throat> and the Bitcoin free pass and blocking everything else, including XRP out. I'm sure it's a pure coincidence that around that same time, all the way up until they were teaching people how to buy XRP, they were all for it. They understood it. It wasn't some mystery. It wasn't until after that that they stopped showing it on the screen and all that. I'm sure that none of that was coordinated. But here, not only did they get it, but Brian Kelly says it's so going not, it's, not, it's, a, it's a currency. ...about whether or not he would be added to Coinbase. He said it's up to Coinbase. What do you think, BK? What's the next logical so, coin to be added? I mean, certainly, certainly Ripple is probably... Now, remember also, I'll never forget it. When um, Melissa Lee, I think she had Mike Novogratz on, and he was talking about how he just didn't understand it and all that. Well, Mike, I'll never forget it because Melissa, Miss Melissa Lee says almost, almost on cue, she says, "Oh, so you don't get it either." Well, my question to you is, they all, or my point is, they all seem to get it right here, okay? <clears throat> and this is, um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't even remember the date right here, but they all seemed to get it then, but then for some reason, Melissa Lee all of a sudden doesn't get it, but they get it here.
those ripples stellar uh, are one of those. I don't have any special insight. Uh, but, you know, Coinbase is a strategic partner for most coins out there. And, you know, Ripple is a currency. Uh, I, I don't think, and I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think you can argue that it's uh, necessarily security at all. So it would be a natural step for them to do that. Uh, you know, so the, I would say Ripple or Stellar would be my odds on favorite to be the next one uh, to be put on Coinbase. There you go. All right. And, and so, look. I've said it a thousand times. Th there was a coordinated effort from around, at least around January 2018 when XRP hit its all-time high. For the next three or four years, there was a coordinated effort from all facets in the media, in the this and the that, and it was all to hold Ripple and XRP back. Now, let's, the, the most fascinating thing in all of this, all these people in all their genius the most fascinating thing about all of it is to look what they decided would be the smart thing to put their money on because I'm going to show you. Remember the other day we had the U.S. Department of the Treasury come out. Today the Treasury is sanctioning Tornado Cash, virtual currency mixer that launders the proceeds of cyber crimes including those committed against victims in the United States. Despite public assurances other than Tornado Cash, repeatedly failed to uh, impose effective controls designed to stop it from laundering funds. Da 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 da. So the Treasury's on the job, right? Well, guess who, and this is called a currency mixer. Well, guess, you'll never guess who has been, who in the past has promoted currency mixers. In fact, I wonder if there was any currency mixers that were used in helping to hide the disguised whales from the Ethereum ICO. That'd be something worth looking into. So here you go, U.S. Treasury, and I copied all the congressmen in because I think that they might want to see this. This is who your government, the United States government, has, has propped up Bitcoin and Ethereum, where there is more secrecy, more hidden things in finance, and put, I'm not saying there was, but potential money laundering. If you're hiding it, what's going on? They can't see it. That's why they're cracking down on this tornado cash. So watch this. This is who the U.S. government has, has said, hey, this is, this, is who, this is what we want to be the cryptocurrency industry, Ethereum. Just watch. This is three minutes and 29 so seconds. So there are se uh, several different tools that you can use. Uh, the first tool that we already sort of talked about is called Tor. Uh, basically, that Tor handles your internet connections. And in fact, just recently, I believe, the, the most popular Bitcoin client got a patch that lets it, off, that lets it work with Tor, and I'm sure some others do, some others do too. But then the second and more, uh, second and more critical part is called, is called a mixing service. Basically what mixing services, services are is they're services where you, you put in a certain number of Bitcoins and then you give them one, one, of, your, one of your other addresses that you've never used before. And then within within a few hours or so, and in a few in a few chunks, that's that's the service basically spits spits the, the same amount of bitcoins back out again. So the reason why you'd want to use that is because from uh, looking looking from an outside point of view, there's there's no obvious link between the bitcoins that go in and the bitcoins that go out. And you now the most po the most popular but. Uh, Mixing service is run by blockchain.info, which charges a half a percent fee. But really, you can use almost anything as a mixing service. You can you can use exchanges. You can use ver you can use various uh, kinds of kinds of online wallets. And basically, if you sort of chain many of them together, then really there's no single person in the person in the world that will be able to 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 figure out the trail between the bitcoins that you receive. Maybe the U.S. government couldn't find out the trail. And where you're trying to spend them. So you said that you guys are looking to uh, incorporate and do this out of Switzerland, mm -hmm. and you're purposely uh, you come from you live in Canada, right? Yes. And so you're purposely not doing it in Canada, and you're purposely not doing it in the U.S. Um, A large part of that is regulatory reasons. Okay. So with Switzerland, they have a very long and established tradition of uh, first of all, friend, very friendly banking laws. Also, a, friend, a tradition of stability. So it's not like some tiny tax haven that's, that's going to turn against us the moment that the U.S. government wants them to. So, from an organizational standpoint, our current situation is that we have 
and an entity registered in Switzerland. And the reason why we're looking at Switzerland as a jurisdiction is because, first of all, we Switzerland is very well known for its uh, very very friendly banking laws. It's uh, much easier to do any anything related to innovative finance in Switzerland than it is in something like the United States or even Canada. All right, now you've seen that a thousand times. That's Joseph Lubin helping to, uh, to explaining to investors that he'll help them disguise whales. Now this right here is interesting. Anonymous user sends Ethereum from Tornado Cash to prominent figures. And I think that they're doing it so that <coughs> those people, when, when, when it hits their Ethereum account, that all of a sudden those addresses will be considered illegal or, or that people can be sanctioned if anybody deals with those addresses almost like quarantining those addresses to not be able to do anything interesting stuff now check this out this is e rob found this let me make sure i follow him <coughs> this is um former sec lawyer john barry check this out in litigation <coughs> uh john and mike i mean you're listening to Steve, or even just looking at SEC filings, all you do is apply this 80 year old Howie case and SEC wins. That's it. Open and shut. I mean, are there defenses or is it hopeless? Well, what I, what's interesting, I mean, it goes to what I was talking about earlier that, you know, two, three years ago when the SEC started bringing all these cases, you know, most of those cases, I think for the most part, clearly fit within Howie. There were people who were using these tokens to raise money for something that hadn't even been created yet. Um, and it was clear that people were, and they were marketed that way and it was very clear. The SEC, I think, has gotten more aggressive. I think that the Telegram and Kick cases, I thought were pretty aggressive cases. Um, and I certainly would put Ripple in that category. I mean, you, you look at Ripple itself, I mean, it's a token that's been around since I think 2013. Um, and it's a lot like this other currency called Ether which is a lot like Bitcoin. Um, Ether started and the founders of Ether used the token to raise money to help build its platform. And now Ether is out there and can be used just like Bitcoin to buy, to buy uh, goods and services. But the SEC has not and has never brought um, a case against Ether. Um, and so I think that's an interesting comparison when you look at Ripple and Ether being so similar. Now, the SEC is going to point out certain things about Ripple that can make it different. Um, you know, Ripple, they, they would say, marketed its XRP. It's kind of an XRP token as, a, as an investment. It's found. Ethereum marketed as an investment more than the Ripple ever thought about doing. I don't even think Ripple did. Um, okay, there's a, there's a part two to that. I'm not going to play the rest of that, but I just wanted to show you a couple more things. Um, Apex Development Su Summit, this is um, uh, from Ripple X. They're going to be in Las Vegas September 6th to, to the 8th. Might want to go check that out. And then I want to show you a creepy tweet I saw. Are you paying attention yet? And it's got the leader of China with half of our, with some of our prominent Congress people. This, this photo, knowing what I know about, just knowing what I know about Ethgate, this photo creeps me out. I'm telling you, what has happened to the United States of America? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that I want to know what in the world has happened to the United States.